Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this installment of our CBC Spotlight Series, where we shine light on one of the many programs, opportunities, and experiences that we offer here at CBC. Today, we are going to be talking to two very special guests regarding our leadership program. Before we get into that broadcast, though, I do want to remind you that tomorrow afternoon, at 12 p.m., we have our Chick-fil-A in chat. This has been a very popular program for us. This is an opportunity for your sons to connect with CBC students, of course, albeit virtually, um, to ask questions, find out more about CBC, and just hear about the CBC experience. We call it Chick-fil-A in chat because every student that joins us for Chick-fil-A in chat will receive a $10 Chick-fil-A gift card. So we bring the Chick-fil-A, you bring the chat. Of course, keep in mind that every Tuesday throughout the summer, in the morning, 10 a.m., uh, we are offering our CBC Coffee and Conversation. We provide the coffee, you provide the conversation. Everybody that joins us for that broadcast uh, will receive a $5 Starbucks gift card. This is your chance as parents or guardians to connect with the CBC admissions teams, to ask questions that you have, to find more uh, information out about programs and opportunities and experiences. So again, that's every Tuesday morning at uh, 10 a.m. Of course, all you need to do for those uh, opportunities is to register. You see the link down below, www.cbchs.org slash register slash, and you do need that extra slash in order to, in order to register. Uh, so of course, we wanna hopefully join us virtually. For families who are comfortable, we are offering in-person tours on campus here at CBC High School throughout the summer. These tours are by appointment. They are private tours. Uh, you, your family, your son, a member of the admissions team, this is a chance for you to come and find out a little bit more about CBC. And so uh, with that, I think it's uh, time that we jump into our uh, next CBC Spotlight series. Today, we are spotlighting the CBC Leadership Program. And I have two very special guests with me this morning uh, or this afternoon. Thank you to uh, both Mr. Sean McGraw and Mr. Ms. Shelley Hartman, who are joining us from the Leadership Program. Sean, Shelley, how are you guys today? Great. Thanks, Doing Jeff. Well. Doing awesome well. Thank to have you. you. Sean, why don't you take the lead and, uh, and let us know a little bit about yourself, what you do here in the Leadership Program. Sure. Uh, my name is Sean McGraw. I've been here at CBC for about, uh, I guess, about eight years now, believe it or not. Um, and I head up the leadership program. So I was lucky enough to uh, take over this program about, I guess, about five years ago. I uh, started with a junior leadership class, and we'll talk about it here in a minute, but I've kind of grown it into a uh, freshman leadership class and also a senior leadership class. And so I kind of helped direct that uh, that program. Yeah, and Shelly, you're uh, you're more recent uh, as part of the uh, leadership program, but I guess now going on, is this your third year, going on your third year in the leadership program? Yes. Yeah, this is my third year in the leadership program. Um, I help out with some of the freshman classes, and um, I'm also um, part of the math department here. I've been at CBC now for going on my seventh year here. And uh, the proud mother of uh, two future uh, CBC students. Yeah, uh, class of 2030 and 2032. There you wow. go. And uh, and Sean, you've uh, you've had a recent graduate and a very recent graduate. Uh, so uh, tell us a little bit about your sons uh, and, and their experience at CBC. Absolutely, uh, Dylan, my older son, he graduated in 2018, and he's now at Belmont University. And I just had one, I guess technically he's, uh, he's about to graduate, um, <laughs> waiting for that to happen, but uh, it's, he's going he's gonna to graduate with this class of 2020 uh, when we're able to do that this, uh, later this summer, and he's going to be going to Dayton University. Awesome. And so let's jump right in on the leadership program. Both Dylan and Ryan are, uh, I guess, uh, at some point, Ryan will be a technically a graduate uh, of the leadership program. But Sean, you mentioned that it really is a true program. It's it's just not a one-off class. It's not that like, oh, we have a, a student leadership council or a student council or student government. It truly is a comprehensive program. So tell me a little bit about like, what's the goal, the philosophy the, of the leadership program at CBC? Yeah, Jim, thanks for asking. Um, really, the 
the whole design of the program is to lead a student from the infancy of leadership through the actual implementation and, and changing of culture. So it starts anytime you're going to create a, or, or someone's going to become a leader, they have to learn to lead themselves first. So we focus on self-leadership and we'll talk a little bit more about what that is uh, throughout the day uh, or throughout this, um, this, this call, I guess. Um, but then it's also about navigating transitions. We've never, <laughs> we saw some serious uh, change over the course of the last several months um, in our country. And um, I guess that's the best way to explain why these kids need to know how to navigate change. But of course, the obvious change that they're going to be navigating is changing into high school. And so we focus on that. So it's navigating change. It's self-leadership. It's then learning to connect with others. I think that that's incredibly important, being able to, uh, to make that emotional connection, but also be able to communicate. And then ultimately leading others. And, and you know, the, the best part of this is going out and changing culture. So we've designed a curriculum that's, that's about that, from our freshman leadership class, which is called Man for Tomorrow Leadership, to our junior leadership class. And then finally, we uh, most recently created a class called Leadership in Action. And we'll talk about that, but that's basically where some of our seniors who have been through this program go out and teach leadership lessons to seventh and eighth graders at local grade schools and, and truly do change the culture. Yeah, so I've heard you say, um, you know, as, as you talk with other people, I've heard you say um, that, that CBC wants to be intentional about teaching guys the qualities and characteristics of what it takes to be a great leader. Um, what, tell me an example, give me an example of, of us being an intentional, uh, 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 teaching guys uh, what it takes to be a great leader. Can you give me an example? Yeah, you know, it's funny, Shelly and I were just talking about this a, a little bit before we got on this call, that the program itself is, yes, it's a series of classes, right? So it's freshman, junior, senior, but really it's more than that. And it sounds a little corny, but I, I truly believe it. It's a movement right now here at CBC. Um, what we do is we give kids permission to lead. And I think in our society, we, we so often handhold them so much that uh, they don't feel like they have the permission to, to take those things that they're learning and implement them. And so from the very first day that they come here, when they take that freshman leadership class, really what we're saying is, here are the tools, don't wait for us, go lead. And so we've seen some incredible success stories about the, you know along those lines, being intentional, um, taking the initiative. Uh, we'll, we can talk about that a little bit later, but if you followed CBC at all in social media, over the course of the last couple of years, you've, you've met Trip Toby, um, and Alex Williams, both who were a part of the, the freshman program, the first year we had the freshman leadership class, as a matter of fact. And, you know, they didn't create serving servicemen because of leadership class, but leadership class gave them permission to create serving servicemen. And so what they do now is they, they had a passion for serving the military or, or being part of the military, helping veterans. And so now they go out and they help veterans um, you know, volunteer time. And they've got a, a huge contingent of, of CBC students. And so I think that's a success story, if you will, of um, being intentional about leadership. And, and that's not because of the leadership program, but it kind of is. Um, that's where those, those discussions started. And I think, I really do believe it gives these students permission to go out and make a difference. And we, we're getting more and more of those success stories. That's why I say it's a movement. We can talk about some of that um, here in a bit as well. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, you mentioned uh, giving the invitation. I mean, I know, Shelly, we talk a lot about in the freshman class, um, you know, uh, hashtag no title needed, right? You don't need a title in order to be a leader. And, and so I think is no more true. You work with the freshmen specifically. So talk a little bit about the freshman leadership class and what that is all. Uh, how, how does that work? So all of our freshmen are placed into a leadership class, either first semester or second semester. And what we do is we try to teach a lot through images um, from, we take our guidance a lot from Dr. Tim Elmore. And basically we try to plant all of these little seeds, right? Um, our freshmen, they're not gonna be, you know, maybe captain of a varsity team their freshman year, but we will hopefully plant these little seeds in order to get them to understand how to lead themselves before they can go out and lead others and just kind of make that positive impact um, in, in their world. Um, we don't necessarily need students to um, go out there and change the whole world because that's, that's really daunting, but how can they change their world or the world of, of their buddy or something like that um, in a positive way? We try to plant all of these 
little nuggets of information um, and hopefully things will things will stick. Um, and as you can see from some of our success stories, um, they are. Yeah, I think that's a great point. I think you make a really good point when you say, um, you know, not every kid is is going to be what we would consider to be the traditional leader. You know, so not every kid's going to be the president of the student leadership council. Not every kid's going to be the the captain of the football team. But one of the things that I think is really impressive with, with, with what you guys have done in a leadership program is you guys approach this leadership program from the fact that 100 percent of students can be great leaders and 100 percent of students at some point in their life are going to have to be leaders. You know, and so building in those foundational skills necessary, uh, I, I think that's incredible. You talked also about images and, and really teaching through images. Sean, talk a little bit about the work Dr. Tim Elmore has done. I mean, we've modeled our leadership program partly after the work that he's done, but talk a little bit about the work he's done and specifically why teaching with images. Yeah, I think it's because it sticks. Um, you know, when you, when you talk about um, habitudes images, and, and that's what they're called, you know, you're attached two senses to it. So certainly we're learning what those images represent, but by seeing a visual, we remember it. It's kind of like when we, uh, you know, when we learned our ABCs, we remember our ABCs because we remember the song, right? We, that's how we were taught. And so it's immediately associated. It's hard to think of our ABCs without thinking that silly song in the back of our head. Um, it sticks. We remember it. Because of those, uh, because of those images, we remember it better. So we have, for example, an image called the iceberg. I can go to some of my seniors or even some of their recent graduates. Some of uh, I told you I have a 2018 grad. His friends will come over uh, that were in that leadership class occasionally as sophomores, almost juniors in college, and I'll say, "Okay, what's the iceberg?" And they can just immediately it's character. They remember it because you're attaching another sense to the lesson, and I think that that's very effective. Yeah, that is. I mean, you mentioned the iceberg. I mean, I, you know, I've been fortunate enough to uh, have a hand in helping create the uh, initial version of the leadership yeah. program in the junior leadership class that, that you now teach. Uh, you know, and, and it's funny because you mentioned earlier, and I, and I 100 percent agree, it's, it's a it's a movement. It's a culture. But what we're doing with images and with with the habitudes in particular from Dr. Tim Elmore is we are wrapping a common language around points of emphasis. So you mentioned iceberg. I can walk down the hall and into any CBC student right now, say, gentlemen, this is an iceberg. Iceberg, gentlemen, what are we talking about here? And and they know that the image of the iceberg, and we all know it, it's, you know, the, the top 10% is what people see, but it's the other 90% that really makes up the iceberg. And so same thing with, with character. You know, what you see on the outside is what you see, but it's really only 10% of what who you actually are. And it's what's on the inside, your morals, your, you know, all the things that drive you, um, what you're grounded in is, is something that's really important. So, you know, teaching through those, I think, is, is absolutely critical. Um, Sean, you've actually more recently put in, I feel like, a, a pretty important class. So you talked about a sequence here. So freshman year, we're talking about um, not only navigating transitions, but learning to lead yourself, which is an incredible skill. Junior year then is focused on, okay, juniors are starting to take leadership roles around the school. You've, you've gotten a leadership role. What do you do in that role? Senior year focuses on something really different and something that I think any leader would agree that like changing culture is really tough. So talk about that senior leadership program. Yeah, and, and I think it, just to give you a little bit of background on that, it, what's kind of cool about the evolution of the program is it started with the juniors, right? So we had that junior class. And normally with that junior class where we have we have guest speakers, great guest speakers, and we can talk about that too, but um, we also have a project. And one year I said, okay, guys, you know, what do you want your project to be? And so say, they started talking back and forth and they said, Mr. McGraw, why are we the only ones that get to see these images? Why are we the only ones that get to, get, you know, to see these lessons or hear these lessons? Shouldn't everybody be able to benefit from that? And I said, well, that's a good point. Let's talk about it. And so they started this discussion and they said, we need a freshman leadership class. So they came up with the idea. And I said, look, I don't have the, I don't have the authority. Mr. Brockman has the authority. I don't have the authority to say whether that can work or not. So they gave a pitch to you, to uh, Mr. Seymour, to our administration and said, this is what we want to create. And thanks to you guys, but also really thanks to the initiative taken by those kids, they created the freshman leadership class. And now, you know, all of our students take that on the way in. But the same thing happened the following year where they said, look, 
we've done this. We need to go out and change the world. You know, that's their vision. And so they put together a pitch to you guys again and said, hey, what about going out and teaming up with some of these uh, these local grade schools and teaching leadership lessons to seventh and eighth graders? And they put together the plan. They pitched it to uh, administration. Administration, uh, in their wisdom, said yes. <laughs> and, uh, and, and so there we go. We're teaming with uh, several different schools around the area. Our guys go out during the middle of the school day and they team up with these seventh and eighth graders and they teach them the lessons that they felt they should have or could have benefited from had they learned them earlier. So our guys are pay, you know, paying it forward and, and hopefully allowing these kids, and I really do believe they are allowing these younger kids to, uh, to, to understand some things that are fundamental to being successful, to becoming leaders, and to being positive leaders in, in their environment. And I, I think that that leadership in action class has just been, been phenomenal for those kids. Yeah, and it really, I think a very apropos title to uh, leadership in action. I mean, it really is taking those those qualities, the characteristics, those skills they've built over three years, and then immediately putting them into action. And one of the things I know we we talk a lot about um, one of the highest form of leaderships leadership in the world is then mentoring the next generation of great leaders. And so that's something that I think is really cool. Now let's switch gears for a second. Let's talk about great leaders mentoring the next generation of leaders. Um, we have put together an incredible uh, guest speaker program here at CBC. And so uh, Sean, talk a little bit about the guest speaker program here and, and the impact that has on our students. Well, thanks, Jim. As, as you mentioned, um, you know, it, it is about giving back. And, and so we've been fortunate to have some of the, you know, the coolest people that the most generous people give back to us. And, and, and I say give back. Some of these people never had an association with us, but still dedicate that time. Uh, one of them that, uh, that came back home, who was a CBC grad is Joey Vitale. Um, Joey Vitale came back this year for the first time. Oh, there he is right there. Um, <laughs> and, uh, he came back for the first time to, to speak to our guys this year. And it was awesome. I mean, he, what he displays and, and for, for those who don't know who Joey is, uh, Joey's currently the broadcaster, one of the broadcasters for the St. Louis Blues, the Stanley Cup champion, St. Louis Blues. Sure. Um, he played in the NHL uh, for several years, and he played here at CBC. He was a, a, a CBC grad. I don't remember what year he graduated. Uh, you remember that, Jim? That was he was an old, uh, 2004 graduate of CBC. Okay. He was high school hockey at CBC. It would, what's amazing about him is the humility um, his passion for what he does, his, his dedication, you know, the lessons that he gives back, but probably most importantly is his lesson in faith and um, how faith helped him persevere through some, some very dark times where he suffered some injuries and had to fight through that and, and, and had to get into this new career and, uh, and just how you know, that perseverance and that faith brought him through. And I, I think it's such a tremendous lesson for the kids. But we've also had people like Colleen Quigley, who's the daughter of one of our, uh, our teachers here, uh, Mr. Gaylord Quigley. Um, she's a, an Olympic athlete. She was scheduled to compete in this year's Olympic Games. Uh, she was trying to uh, trying to qualify and was most likely going to qualify. But obviously, we had a, you know, a little change of plans there. Uh, but she did compete back in Rio. And she's, as, for as much success as she's had, She's one of the most, again, humble um, and relatable and tremendous inspirational people. I gave a, a great, um, a just great role model for our young men, quite honestly. And, and so she came to speak with us. We had uh, last year, we were fortunate enough to have one of the Blue Angels come to speak to us. Uh, we've had Lieutenant General Mark Hurtling, who's a grad of uh, CBC, who helped run our armed forces over in Europe uh, just you know, less than a decade ago. And he's now, you'll see him on CNN occasionally. And uh, he's just a tremendous leader and, and his stories, uh, just phenomenal. I know, Jim, you had the privilege of being able to be in for some of those uh, as well, but just a tremendous resource for our guys. But it, it's not just him, it's uh, you know people like Daniel Miller who helped find Lady Annabellum for you country music fans out there, uh, currently works with Martina McBride. We've had people like Dave Peacock, uh, who's the COO and president of Schnooks, he used to be with Anheuser-Busch. Um, uh, Brandon Mann, uh, who you and I both know <laughs> of Kingdom Capital, phenomenal. Just a, a number of people that, that pour into our guys and help you know, leave, you know, leave the next generation better maybe than they were. 
And so uh, we're really fortunate there. Yeah. And, and Shelly, talk a little bit. Um, you guys don't do as many guest speakers amongst the freshmen. So what are some elements that a, an incoming freshman parent would see in, say, a, a freshman leadership class? What kind of stuff do you guys do in that class? That class, um, which part of the reason why I, I love teaching it, sometimes it just kind of evolves in, on, on its own, depending on the group of students. Um, so I had a group of students that really loved one of the images that we did um, called um, thermostats and thermometers. So we would go through and it's about, do you set the tone of the room when you walk in or do you just kind of sit back and take the temperature of the room and talking about how, you know, sometimes in different situations, you might have to go back and forth. But what we did is we would try to create little games and things around the images that they seemed to relate to the most. So we would do um, fun little mock interviews, um, but we'd make them silly. Like you're interviewing for um, a hot dog stand. You know, you got to tell us everything you know about it. Um, something kind of silly to take the pressure off, um, but then still try to plant those seeds of learning how to communicate, learning how to listen, um, creating a conversation face to face. Um, things like that, that sometimes we take for granted that everybody just knows how to do. Um, so we kind of provide a space through our images um, to, to be able to do that in a fun way that doesn't necessarily seem like work. Um, our students will communicate through, you know, like I said, those fun little mock interviews or sometimes we have, we, we call it the hot seat um, or you know, sometimes through writing and reflections, which get a little bit more serious. And sometimes it's it's just listening. Um, it's just being able to do a presentation. We know their first presentations sometimes are not gonna be good and that's okay. So we'll give them a chance, hey, listen, next time, maybe we should do this. Um, so all of those little soft skills that I think a lot of times, you know, teachers and parents take for granted that everybody just knows how to do, we provide that space for them to be able to build on those um, in the best way that they can. Yeah, and we folks, you mentioned 21st century skills and 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 everything you just mentioned there. Uh, you know, CBC is is you know over the past five years has really undergone a shift to put a more of an emphasis on those 21st century skills, that creativity, the collaboration, communication, critical thinking. Um, you you hit all of those. Um, I know you guys have leadership challenges also. Um, are are they done more in the freshman class? Are they done more in the junior class, more in the senior class? Where, where are those done, Shelly? We do a lot of those in the freshman class. Um, we found that um, these kids, students just want to be up and moving. So sometimes we just make them up on the fly. Sometimes our students make them up. Um, and my room is like the furthest away from anything in our activities wing. Um, so one day we decided that they needed to use these tubes and get a ball um, without the ball touching the floor from my room down to the gym into the basketball hoop. Um, it was hysterical, um, but created a lot of teamwork um, and just kind of a fun way to, um, you know, do those teamwork activities without um, always staying put in a classroom. So we would always create little leadership challenges. Um, one of my classes, the gym wasn't, there was no gym class um, at that time. So we took advantage of that and created fun little obstacle courses that required communication um, and things like that. Yeah, and I think, you know, creating those challenges is, is, as you mentioned, silly and kind of fun as they are, they work on those skills. They work on the creativity, the communication, the collaboration, critical thinking. I can remember from my days in teaching leadership, uh, uh, Kaz Smith, I can still remember this to, to the day. Um, we gave them a, a, a leadership challenge, the stack the nail challenge. And Sean, I don't know if it's in your class, you guys do, but it was in the junior yeah. class at the time yeah. when I taught it. And essentially it's a, it's a two by four with a single nail sticking out of it. And then you have another, what, uh, 20 nails that you have to figure out a way to stack on that single nail. And oh my gosh, the number of, you know, different you know, attempts. But Cass Smith, who has now gone on to uh, to Rice University, I believe, and uh, doing great things in their engineering program. I can still remember him to the day, got his entire team, and we're talking, he's got, He's got captains of the football team. He's got guys who are our lead parts in our theater program. He's got all these different guys. And Kaz stepped up and said, we will not fail. Let's figure this out. And I remember him taking the nail over to the door 
and using the door and trying to bend <laughs> the nails so that he can create a pattern that makes some engineering concept. And, uh, and they failed. Uh, or as we told him, you didn't fail. You just found one way it didn't work. Uh, but now it's time to find the way it did work. It was, it was incredible. Those those challenges are really exciting um, and silly, Shelly. You mentioned silly, but they're they're really important. Uh, and, Sean, you got, a, you got a favorite leadership challenge? Uh, you know what? I, it, it's actually that one. Quite honestly, <laughs> it, you know, for that level, for the freshman level, is that one. And, and I think what's funny about that, what you just said about Kaz, is that's the lesson. The whole underlying lesson behind the nail challenge is uh, leaders find a way. And so the fact that he was trying to bend the nail, technically, if we didn't, if we allowed him to, he was going to find a way. He was going to engineer a way out of that. And that is kind of the underlying lesson for you freshmen or incoming students that may have watched. I, I just gave away the, uh, the, you know, the ending of that. That's what that, the point of that is. But for me, it's that one at that level. But just to give you some perspective on how that grows in junior year, it's basically those, those leadership challenges are this. Hey, what do you want to see changed? Right. That's the question. And they're allowed to sit there and get on the, the whiteboards behind me and go, look, let's change this. Let's do this. One of the, you know, we talked about success stories. Um, a kid named Luke Hammett. Luke Hammett was in a uh, leadership class one day, and he's, he's a big advocate for a thing called Brothers in Prayer that was created by our religion department. And the religion department, they would get a decent turnout to this, you know, every Thursday morning, you got kids volunteering their time, showing up early for school at 7 a.m. or whatever it is, um, and, and going into that meeting to pray and to be with each other for, you know, fellowship. And, you know, I talked to Luke, I said, okay, what's your dream? He said, I wanna make sure that Brothers in Prayer cannot fit in a classroom. He said, I want someday at CBC to have us, you know, before I leave, have to hold Brothers in Prayer in Ross Hall, which is our cafeteria, because so many guys are there we can't, we can't fit them all. And I said, make it happen. And so he and a couple of other guys, Matt Lewis, uh, you know, Ryan, my, my son, and a couple other guys, were starting to um, you know, dream up how to make these types of changes. And that's the leadership challenge at the junior level, as opposed to the freshman level, where it may be carrying a ball across or you know, across the, uh, the school or whatever. By the time they're juniors, they're solving real problems. And while Luke didn't fill Ross Hall, they did have to expand it to a point where they had what close to 100 kids every week. Was it 80 kids or something like that every single week to pray in the morning? That's the movement that I'm talking about. That I think that is really, uh, um, you know, being driven by students, but given permission by CBC and the leadership program. Yeah, it really is. I mean, I think for, for what you said, kind of empowering our students to uh, to not need permission. Uh, to step up and find ways that, that it's important to lead, find ways they can lead. Um, but this comes back to what, what we know in this program is so important is 100% uh, of these kids are going to have to lead and 100% of these kids can lead. Uh, Luke Hammett is not going to be the captain of the football team. Right. Luke Hammett is is not going to be uh, the lead role in our theater performance. But Luke Hammett 100% can collaborate with Matt Lewis and Ryan McGraw in order to create this incredible Brothers in Prayer experience that drew, as you pointed out, something like 100 guys before school just to share in prayer and fellowship and read the word and, and all those sorts of things. And I, I think that really is the power of, of what we see in the leadership program. Uh, Sean, talk to me, what, where, where is this leadership program going? What do we see over the next five years? Is it uh, trying to make it more robust? Is it branching out? What are we looking to do? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, you know, it's it's funny you ask that. One of the things that one of the first lessons that we teach in leadership class, and, and I think this is important to know, is that you got to be able to adapt to change. And no, you know, as I mentioned before, we have we've seen so much change just in the last few months that we have to adapt. And the leadership program is no different. One of the things that we talk about, Shelley, uh, Scott Pingle, uh, Kevin Sullivan. Uh, Jake Pitroff, we, you know, all of us, we, uh, Mr. Ott, we all get together and we talk in the leadership program about, um, okay, this worked. Now what? Let's erase it and rebuild it. And and so the rebuilding, I think, is going to be fun. We're, we're talking about doing a lot. I mean, we just got introduced to this idea of Zoom calls, right? Out of necessity, but we adapted to change. But one of the things that was really cool this, uh, um, right at the end of this past semester is our students said, look, while we have leadership here at CBC uh, from our upperclassmen, we don't get an opportunity to talk directly to our freshmen and directly to our sophomores. Um, 
so let's do it. And so they created Zoom messages or a Zoom message to be presented to our freshman leadership class, and they meaning our, our juniors. And so they created a conduit using the technology that we have right now to truly lead and communicate everything in real time to our freshmen. I think you're going to see more of that. At our upperclassmen having direct communication and, and leadership um, to and through our underclassmen. But in addition to that, it's going into the world of business. We had the opportunity to go visit Cushman and Wakefield. Um, we had uh, PwC reached out to us and provided us with a tool that we can use to try to introduce uh, new concepts in business to our, um, to our students so that they understand, you know, right now, we have kids, for example, that want to be doctors. Well, they're studying medicine as it is today. Well, you can't necessarily do that. You, you know, if you're a quarterback thrown to a receiver, you throw ahead of the receiver. We know that things are changing so rapidly in industry um, right now. Our students have to be aiming in that direction. So we're using this tool through PwC to be able to introduce these kids to things like blockchain and um, things like, I know there's more business department stuff, but blockchain, uh, 3D printing, um, and what that AI and artificial intelligence and, and augmented reality, what that means for the future of our guys. Why do we do that in leadership class? Just to introduce them to the idea that they have to continuously learn. And so you know, we're going to be turning into, uh, into the world of business, but we're also going to continue to maintain those, uh, you know, that, that pattern of self-leadership, navigating transitions, connecting with others, uh, emotional intelligence um, and, and communication skills, and then moving into leading others and changing culture. So it's all going to follow that pattern. But how we do that needs to be able to be adaptable um, with the environment that uh, as it changes. And so it's a, kind of a vague, long answer to a simple question. But I don't know exactly where it's going to go. But it's going to be fun to allow the students to create that pathway. And so uh, I guess that's the best answer I can give. Yeah, no, I think that's great. I think, I mean, you you hit on a, a ton of different topics there, topics that um, now I, I like want to further dig into, and I want to be respect, <laughs> respectful to uh, uh, to all of our viewers out there as well. Uh, so, so I'm I'm going to put you both on the spot, um, and and I'm going to make you uh, step up right now and answer this question. Um, but uh, one, what give give the viewers a taste. One, your favorite habitude, your favorite image, and give me a, a 15 second overview, 20 second overview of what that image is and the what it teaches, just to give them a taste of what it is. Uh, Sean, you go first. Favorite. No, making me go first. It's, it's not cool. All right, lady, hold on. Ladies first. Ladies first. Shelly, you go. Uh, first. There you go. There you go. Ladies first, always. Um, I My favorite habitude that um, I teach to the freshmen that the freshmen seem to grab onto the most um, would be windshields and rear view mirrors because they're coming in from eighth grade. Um, so that's in their rear view mirror, but the windshield, like that's all of CBC. That is all of the next years after they graduate, um, which for some of them, like thinking about tomorrow is hard. So thinking about the next four years, impossible. Um, but we talk about, listen, guys, you guys are getting ready to get your permits. When you learn how to drive, you got to look in your mirrors or else you're going to crash. So we're not saying, hey, leave the past behind you. We are not saying that at all because that helps define you. But help make that help your windshield be the best that it can be. And so that way you can move forward and do all of the things that you want to do. Excellent. All right, Sean, you, you, got, you had time to think. I should have made both of you answer at the exact same time, but that doesn't no, work. I, I still need like 15 seconds, but I'll give it a go. Um, <laughs> I think mine right now, honestly, because of the way things are, um, the, so much change and, and the way our kids have had to adapt is drivers and passengers. Now, um, drivers and passengers basically is this. is As a passenger in a car, you have the luxury of being able to look out the window, turn the station, you know, get on your phone, and and not really pay attention to the things around you. But when you become the driver, you're responsible for everybody, including yourself. And um, as we move into, you know, whatever, you know, whether, you know, this past semester, for example, when we, we got into quarantine and we had to learn through uh, through the computers, it's it's up to you, you know, and through Zoom calls and, and uh, um, you know, through uh, Teams, it's up to you as a student. You control your education. You control the outcome of, you know, how you do in a football, you know, on the football team. You control so much of this. And, and so I think it's trying to teach our students that, um, you know, to approach education, to approach your life 
Like it's not you showing up at an amusement park and getting on a ride and saying, okay, what do you got for me? Show me this roller coaster. But it's actually you walking up to the, to school, to CBC and saying, okay, I'm going to create a roller coaster and taking control of where your life goes. Um, and I think that that's a really powerful message in, in today's world, because if you wait on somebody else to, to really do all the driving for you, um, you are a passenger and you're subject to where they want to take you. If you're a driver, you control the outcome. And so I, that to me right now is probably my favorite. Yeah, two, uh, you guys you guys nailed two of my favorite images. Of course, the iceberg is is always an awesome one, just the way we kick off the leadership program in general about character. Uh, I got to I gotta offer that my favorite uh, probably is, uh, is Gorillas in Hawaii, uh, which is probably the uh, the least obvious one. I mean, rear view uh, windows and mirrors, I mean, that makes sense. Uh, you know, passenger driver makes sense. Uh, gorillas in Hawaii, long story short, um, there was a guy working for a movie production company and uh, the director said, we need to get gorillas right now on set in Hawaii. I need them tomorrow or next week or whatever. And, and as the guy started to peel the layers of the onion back, he realized it was not easy. There were no gorillas in Hawaii and it was not easy to get gorillas in Hawaii. And so, um, you know, he, he said there were multiple times that I could have just given up. I could have walked away. I got my dream job and I'm going to fail in my first test. Um, but I had to figure it out. And there's a great uh, part of that when we teach girls in Hawaii, um, the scene from um, Apollo, uh, Apollo 13. Yeah. Uh, where um, basically we've been presented with a problem. We've got these guys stuck in space. They're running out of air. We've got to make a filtration device uh with nothing but this and they dump that box of stuff out uh and he says it was the most beautiful line in the movie failure is not an option yeah and so you get really smart people collaborating and failure wasn't an option and so um you know these these images are so powerful this program is so powerful um we are running low on time here uh sean uh, how do we get a hold of what i've got questions i'm excited about the leadership program i want to find out more how do i get a hold of you yeah, just send me an email anytime. It's McGraw, M-C-G-R-A-W-S. There it is. Uh, look at that, at cbchs.org. Feel free to reach out at any time. Um, I love doing this. I love answering questions like that. So you're, uh, you're not going to be bothering me to, to send a message. I'll send you one right back. So feel free to reach out. Excellent. Shelly, I'm assuming the same, uh, same way yeah. here? Yep, absolutely. Hartman M at cbchs.org. I'd be happy um, to talk about this. Um, Sean and I can talk about this for forever. I know we're short on time. So feel free to email any questions. We'd be happy to answer. Yeah. And with that too, I also want to remind people that on-campus visits are always possible. If you have interest in, in CBC, if you have interest in CBC's leadership program, um, I know both Sean and Shelly would be willing to sit down with you during an on-campus visit. Um, I do also want to strongly encourage our, our students, uh, keep in mind our official visit program in the fall. Uh, that'll be your chance to come on campus, hopefully come on campus and, uh, and meet students and meet teachers and all those sorts of things. Um, but one of the neat things about our on-campus visits is we offer for our explore period where our students will have the opportunity to select any program they want to select and then meet with the heads of that program. And so if leadership is something your son is really, really interested in, he comes on his official visit to CBC during the explore period, he could select the explore, uh, ex select the leadership program and, and meet directly with, with Sean and Shelly and talk more about leadership and, and whatever they want to do. Uh, Sean, Shelly, uh, guys, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Uh, it's been a pleasure. I want to I want to jump off this and I want to dig back in on leadership with you guys because uh, it's just such an exciting topic. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Awesome to have you. Thank you, guys. And again, to all those who joined us uh, for today's broadcast, it was awesome having you. Thank you. Uh, thank you for all the chat. Uh, that's uh, obviously something that we love to have. So thanks for engaging, engaging us in our chat. Uh, if we didn't answer a question or if there's something that you have, please reach out to any one of us. Of course, your admissions team, uh, myself, uh, Jim Brockman. Uh, so any one of us are available. Of course, reminder, uh, join us tomorrow afternoon, all prospective students, uh, 12 o'clock uh, for our CBC Chick-fil-A and chat. 
every Tuesday morning for our CBC Coffee and Conversation. And of course, you're here with us right now. So don't forget, Wednesdays, we have all of our um, Spotlight series. So we've got Fine and Performing Arts. We've got obviously Leadership Today. We've got Honors Program. We've got Academic Program, Faith Formation Program. There's a ton of great opportunities. So make sure you register for any one of these events, uh, cbchs.org slash register slash uh, for your CBC admissions team, myself, Jim Brockman, uh, Ryan Batliner, who has been in our production booth. Ryan, great job as always. And Melissa Ryan, who's uh, taking all of our registrations. Thank you for joining us here today. And we look forward to connecting with you uh, throughout the summer. Take care and have a great day.